Hi guys, this is Klazart bringing another audio commentary and this time we're going to be commentating on the epic matchup. This is going to be the finale to what has been an absolutely fantastic and enjoyable festival of Starcraft, the E-Stars Heritage League. Uh, and again, um, for those of you guys who, who aren't aware, I did go and uh, give a big kiss to the person who made this, although uh, I didn't get, we didn't get much further than that because, um, you know, at the end of the day, Mrs. Clazart would beat me up. So, um, but yeah, but I did kiss the guy uh, for you who came up with this. Actually, it was a girl who came up with the concept of this. So, uh, anyway, we've got Savior versus Nada in the final, and I've got Clyze, Rise, and Clyze, Rise, and Collar alongside to commentate this. And, um, you know, there, there have been rumors floating around that Rise and Collar had a falling out because they haven't done uh, any commentaries in a while. And I think the, there was what? actually falling out, and it was because there was falling out because, you see, Rise came up with a joke, and Collar claimed that it was his joke. And, you know, it's been going on for a while, but now they've decided to bury the hatch and they're back both here, so uh, we've got Kara and Rise alongside, and this is on Python. If you want to make up with Cholera, all you have to do is give him a reach around. Oh! Bam! Reach stroke and Cholera. <laughs> oh, together. what is that? <laughs> Classic. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Back to the game, the match at hand. You guys know that we're watching the finals of the E-Star Soul StarCraft Heritage League. This is going to be very exciting. we got my favorite player of all time. That's right, the true favorite player of Rise is Nada. Firebat Hero is number two in my book. Nada will always be number one because ever since I watched StarCraft, I've known about Nada. Well, shortly after I started playing anyway. Um, but he's going up against Savior, which I would imagine these two were favorites for everyone um, to win to actually get to this point, with the exception of maybe Kalar, who is probably rooting for Reach. But um, basically, you know, these two players have made it the, the two uh, most seasoned players right now, I would say. They got definitely a step above the rest in terms of consistent play and, and good practice time. Um, that, that they just have to build upon to get to this point in the match. So really, I would think that we got um, a good match here, and I'm glad these two have made it so far. Uh, Kalaro, what are your opinion on this? What, what do you think with, with the fact that Reach hasn't made it? Are you, are you a little upset about that? Well, no, I, I think he's made it with, uh, with Tosker, at least, uh, which I think was his original goal. <laughs> in this old tournament it was just to get some with Toss Girl, which uh, I'm sure he did. Uh, you know, many articles written about that by Kespa officially confirmed. Uh, she did the walk of shame the morning after. All right, for those of you who don't know, uh, since I have to make these really obvious, evidently according to some legal advice I received, that was a joke. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you received that one. email about how we were not, so, you know, it would be a good idea if we didn't, uh, you know, convince the 1% of you guys uh, of blatant lies that should be obvious. But anyway, um, oh, look at that. Hey, I reckon those guys, those guys uh, they're random white guys. I, I don't know who they are, actually. Um, I think they might be... Uh, they might just be random people who are, are in Korea. No, that's Tasteless and Artosis, of course. Um, this is Savior versus Nada. This is the OSL Finals that Savior uh, won his first OSL title in. Um, and, and certainly Nada is probably itching for a revenge here against Savior. Well, I mean, I don't know, revenge. Both of them are such uh, relatively polite players, at least to one another. Uh, especially Nada, of course, always known for being one of the best-mannered players. And, of course, historically, uh, still the player with the most final final titles. Six titles. Think about that for a second. Six titles uh, in his lifetime. Three MSL, three OSL. That is just unprecedented still. And uh, I, I actually do think um, you guys are right about both these players being probably the favorites in this tournament. They wouldn't be favorites overall in uh, the StarCraft world, but certainly in this tournament I'd say they are. Um, but it looks like uh, we've gotten fast expands from both players. Nada going to go for a M&M build most likely, given his opening, which is going to be fun to watch. On Python, I think M&M is strong. Um, it it, you know, it was the classic build from 2007, 2006 when this map was being played, and uh, I think it's going to work out well for him. Savior also starting with a, a classic, a more orthodox build from uh, that time. He's going to go with a uh, three hatchery opening here. Nada also going for a uh, fast second racks. Um, this is generally more to put pressure before the uh, before Savior can get his Mutalisks out. Uh, he's going to be able to get a couple more Marines, perhaps even for an earlier pressure, in fact. Um, usually you do see an Academy after one Rax, but uh, slight deviation, but still, I'm glad to see actually a standard M&M opening. This is going to be fun.
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the one question that lingers in my mind that I've got to ask both you guys, this tournament has been billed as the Bon Joie of Bon Joie's to decide who is really the legend of the legends. And yeah. I don't feel I don't feel that this tournament really does decide that because there, it's not no. a level playing field. Xavier and Nada are the most current players. However, it does say something for the fact that they are the current players, that they've lasted this long. As I think more so in Nada's case because he's been around a lot longer, I guess, than Xavier. Although I guess, I guess uh, Xavier's reign, uh, Nada's reign, preceded, immediately preceded Xavier's. So in that sense, they've been around since then. And I guess Reach and Boxer's time was even before that, uh, and even Kingdom, I guess. So, um, and, and I guess Nala as well. So I, right, that's true, that's true. So I guess we're, you know, we're, we're probably being a little bit unfair. In, in, in giving these guys a lot of credit, but I think they do deserve that kind of credit. I like I like the fact uh, the build that both these guys have gone for. I love Nada watching Nada play Medic and Marine, uh, and I love watching Savior play this kind of style that he he really revolutionized and and perfected. And Python is, is the map that he's demonstrated the most on. And the thing with Python, Savior's got a bit of a Marmite relationship with Python. He's got to love it. And Savior, even though he's put those Zerglings out there, he, he's not going to intercept this SCV, which is something you would have seen every time in his prime. There's no way that second SCV would have gotten up. Savior ramp into his main, which it, it looks like, oh, Savior's got a drone there blocking it, uh, and he looks like he's now Savior's running in with a group of Zerglings here, Nada doesn't have any medics out right now, so Savior might be able to do some damage and pick up a few Marines, but there is a Firebat out and the medic out, so Nada with perfect timing, uh, and Savior just not getting there in time, but... Um, Savior has a bit of a love-hate relationship with, with Python. He's played some fantastic games of StarCraft, and Nada has killed a drone with his SCV. He's had some fantastic matches on Python, but he's also had uh, some horrible losses, and he, he had that epic match against Firebat Hero with the Battle Cruisers, uh, and I think he lost twice to Firebat Hero in that Best of Five series. I think the Battle Cruiser game was the last one, and that knocked Savior out of a competition and really took the wind out of his sails. And I think that was after he lost to Bisu the season before, uh, and Savior now just trying to uh, harass Nada with his groups. He doesn't have any Sunkans here, however, so Nada pushing in, and I'll come back to the Savior's love hate relationship after this push. Yeah, this is going to be really bad for Savior. He's going to potentially lose every single drone here. He's running them away. Wow. He does manage to get all of them except for one away, but now he's in danger of losing that hatchery. Savior needs to get a nice surround with the amount of links that he has out there. He might be able to, but a little careless. He's he's a little too um, fast on the with the links on the right. He Ooh. goes for a good surround there. He gets almost all the Marines. He takes out uh, everything but a couple of Firebats, which are now out with the Medic, which are going to be pretty effective against the amount of links that are out there, and not a withhold position going on over there trying to surround the eggs as they pop he gets four of the six links not bad at all but now he's got to worry about the rest of the links that are going to come and take them out but he's going to hide behind the mineral lines which is genius this is what i like to see and uh this may work out pretty well for nada from delaying savior and savior if he can't do some damage with those links to not on the other end he's going to be in a little bit of trouble here wow this is such an unorthodox opening from both players actually to, you know starting well not actually mainly from savior i guess, but no sunken colonies, and now he's going to go lurkers, of course. Uh, the last firebats are finally getting killed off with the help of uh, a Hydra there. I do feel, though, that Nada might have been better off taking off that hatchery. Um, I think if he had just uh, right-clicked that hatchery, it would have gone down. He would have lost all of his M&M anyway, but, um, you know, it was going to happen anyway. So, I mean, it, you know, I do feel like, though, he could have taken it down had he just focused fire. It was, you know, it was definitely in the red, and uh, he had uh, still a good group of maybe 10 or so Marines and Medics. Um, now, Savior actually uh, really isn't in a horrible position because he does have uh, the ultimate counter to M&M at this point, which are lurkers of course um, and, and what he can do with his lurkers those are actually guys I don't know uh, those white guys um, what he can do is uh, push forward and, and really put a lot of pressure on Nada but it does look like Nada has done the smart thing the right thing to do against the lurker rush guys is to uh, try to um, uh, push the, the, the zerg forward as much as possible and, and, and just stand outside his natural expansion give ground as slowly as possible Savior snuck in two lings uh, gonna take off an uh, SCV or two but that's not really gonna hurt Nada very much Nada definitely still in the lead um, even though he didn't take down that hatchery, he's definitely slowed Savior down. He's managed to do this, as you can see here, hold Savior off uh, from his main base, and uh, even that is pretty well prepared for Lurkers. So Savior in a bit of trouble. Um, I'm curious whether he's going to go for, and he has a third base, which is uh, definitely what he needs, but not as going to suspect that. I wonder if he's going to go for a fast hive. This is generally the follow-up to this kind of Lurker rush, or if he's going to decide to uh, play more of a mid-game, get a Spire and Mutas. Although, given Savior's style, I'm going to think uh, maybe a fast hive is going to be his, uh, his option here. 
Yeah, the key for Saber obviously is to hold that hatchery at the 12 o'clock where he's got two lurkers morphing and he's going to be able to hold that. And that's th that's what I... Uh, I was actually, funnily enough, just before that battle, I was going to say that this map suits Saber's style where Saber was the one who revolutionized the style of not putting too many sunkers down. Now Nada coming into that uh, expo, but he's only got the one fire bat in right now and Saber's going to be able to get that lurker on top of the ramp and that's going to probably put pay to any uh, desires Nada has of really doing too much damage to it. Now some links come in to reinforce. So Saber's going to be able to hold that expansion. Nada having lost an entire group of medic and marines almost doesn't have the forces really right now to take it down, but he's got his first tank out, he's got the uh, control tower down, so Nada's still in a good position of making that big push, and Savior really hasn't been able to push out with those lurkers, so he's not delaying Nada's siege tank from getting there at all. Nada's siege tank is going to be able to get almost straight from his base to his forces outside Savior's main and start shelling Savior, and Savior doesn't even have any uh, any sunkens to even delay that push with the Medic and Marines, so he does have a lot of uh, lurkers, so he's going to have to rely on lurkers and links to just try and take on Nada in the middle of the field and maybe get some sort of flank going, but that's what Savior really created and, and, and popularized the whole idea of almost not building any sunk or building the minimalist amount of sunk and and he used to do this constantly on Python, just run rings around his opponent with lurkers and links, and therefore not have to spend and have a mobile force kill his opponent's forces and not just be stuck in defensive mode until defilers popped, which is something that a lot of Zergs do, and that was, that was I feel, that Savior's biggest contribution to StarCraft's strategy uh, in, in, in perfecting that whole three hatchery build going. And in, in the middle of that whole battle that was happening with not uh, uh, not pushing at Savior's National Expo, he still managed to get that third hatchery up and running, uh, and get it uh, quite well running. So I think Saber's in actually a good position now, and it's just going to be a question of Nada being able to put a lot of pressure, because even though Nada's got that siege tank out, he's going to have a science missile popping out. The problem is, Saber's got a hell of a lot of lurkers. He's got something like 11 lurkers, and um, if he gets a couple of scourges, that's going to be the key to take that science missile down. It, it almost seems like Nada has as many mar uh, marines and medics and firebats as Savior does lurkers at this point. Uh, I would imagine that he's got more at his home base, but right now it looks like, you're right, he really is in a pretty good position. He just just loaded up that dropship, so I guess he was saving about eight of them for that, of course. And uh, I, I guess he's going to head over to, to Savior's base to drop them at the expansion, but I think Savior might have just saw that with the three lurkers he just burrowed, and it looks like he has as he gets Lings yeah. into position to deal with any drop that might be heading that way and you can see the first person view and Nada has scanned that so I can only assume that Nada will not be going there and uh, maybe to the main base instead but no um, taking out an overlord of the mineral only right outside the main base instead of everything else and he doesn't even get it so not gonna work out too well for Nada he's gonna have to be a little bit more careful and his dropship is being spotted but scourges are now heading over to that location so Nada might actually lose that dropship which would be pretty bad for him at this point and oh he loses both of them without even being able to drop one marine out of there to try to defend against it so savior is really on top of defending his base at this point but really I, ha I i just don't feel like he's come out far enough from his base to really put the pressure on nada in return nada just continuing to keep the pressure on savior's front door and if savior can't defend against this or, or get a nice surround going which right now it looks like he's not going to be able to do although on the mini map it looks like he is bringing units out i just don't think he's going to be prepared to deal with nada's big medic marine tank push which science vessel support especially with the radiate coming out. Man, I really fear if Savior goes in right now and fails. This is uh, something that Savior, I think, has a problem with um, since he's kind of gotten his slump, is pushing too fast. Now he is getting into Defiler Mound. Good. Um, a lot of times he'll go in with Lurkers and Lings right before even he gets his Defilers out, usually out of desperation, and then he'll lose his entire force, and then he'll have his first Defiler out right afterwards. It's really sad to watch that timing. Um, I mean, sometimes it's forced onto him, like uh, a couple games with Firebat Hero, but uh, really he needs to get, the, get, get this attack off with some Dark Swarm. Obviously, that is a huge force multiplier. Um, and Saber now actually has gotten behind Nada's force, so he's going to go basically right into Nada's base, and Nada might not be able to defend this. He only has one siege tank. Uh, Saber going in with probably more than a dozen lurkers. He gets a surround on the bunkers. The bunkers are going to go down. Is Nada going to go right for it is the question. No, Nada actually has one siege tank. Is that just one? Only one siege tank up front. Nada actually slowly now trying to drill into Saber's natural expansion, but I feel that uh, I feel that Nada has not played particularly excellently in this game. He is in a bit of trouble right now. He's going to lose his natural expansion. Actually, he's in huge trouble right now because he's not managing to get into Savior's natural, and this could be over very soon. Once Savior gets a couple of uh, of 
Defiler's out, and that Dark Swarm, um, that's going to be absolutely over for Nada. Nada's going to lose his natural entirely. He's forced to lift, as you can see. Savior pushing up forward. Well, I mean, if Nada can somehow push forward and take out Savior's natural expansion, he's still in this game very much. Um, he's trying to do that just right now. As you can see, he's going to go right in. Savior's got a lot of Lurkers morphing. I think the Lurkers are probably going to come out in time, but Nada is advancing right now. He doesn't have enough tanks, though. Um, he might be able to start reinforcing this. If the hatcheries go down, that's going to be huge. Savior's going to lose two hatcheries right here. This game is actually coming down to the wire here, but I think Savior's Lurker eggs are actually going to be able to block the ramp. Nada's managed to kill something before they even hatch. Savior's Lurker hatch. He manages to get uh, some of the Lurkers down. Lurkers go down, though. Savior um, <laughs> still in, in trouble here. Nada right now only has one base, but he's managing to land. Savior, GG's. Oh my Jeez. god, Savior throws in the Dell! Nada takes out his natural and Savior is out of the game! Wow, just like I said, the timing just so slightly off. Savior unable to uh, get the Defilers out. I think it was a right move to go for his attack, but what do you guys think though? Should Savior have delayed more or do you think that attack was a good idea there? I think he I think he should have waited for Nada to go into his main and maybe he could have left a couple of lurkers to delay Nada's reinforcements from getting there uh, but I think he should have he should have tried to pincer I mean the thing is you cannot the, the, the way the timing of this whole push works is at the point where Zerg, there, there are a couple of points where Zergs are vulnerable obviously early game when you know when they're trying to get their sunkens up if they don't get enough sunkens up but then the second point is before those defilers come up that's when Zerg are vulnerable with this sort of strategy and the Terran push uh, the American Marine push is timed to hit the Zerg with uh, with a single science vessel or a couple of science vessels and two or three siege tanks and a couple of medic Marine groups at that point in time and it's down to the Zerg being able to hold off the Terran force in time for the Defilers to pop out and usually in order to do that you need to engage the Terran at least a couple of times and reduce their forces uh, and, and that's why uh, Savior wasn't able to do that in that game so uh, yeah I think Nada played it well in the end but uh, I think Savior, Savior made, went for the wrong option rather than going for the natural because the problem with going for a Terran's natural is even if you take the natural down, they always have a fallback defensive position at their main, which is what Nada basically relied on to hold off Savior's attack. And Zerg don't have that. You only have one line of defense, which is your line of Sunkens, and you've got to hold there. Uh, and I think Savior's overconfidence did him in that game. I think Savior just forgot that Terran buildings lift and Zerg buildings don't, and that was his critical <laughs> mistake. GG. Yeah, I mean, going back to it, I think Savior, God, I mean, he didn't play poorly this entire game. I think he may have played just slightly over aggressively, though. Uh, you know what you were talking about? Savior always, you know, made the right number of sunkens, the minimum number required. Well, I felt like this game he didn't make the minimum number required because he almost lost his natural zero. expansion and ball rights. <laughs> yeah, he by all rights. I mean, sometimes he gets away with zero, but it's only if he manages his to uh, get a surround on those M&M's um, group. And, and, you know, Savior this time was unable to do it. I thought his, uh, despite his link positioning in the middle, he was a little bit sloppy with them. He didn't do, um, you know, he didn't do enough with them in the early game. So I felt like he wasn't playing perfectly. Uh, it, just like, you know, too aggressively. I guess Nada played more imperfectly than Savior, though, in terms of just uh, his micro. I felt Nada was actually pretty off this game. Um, you know, he lost that uh, that dropship in the upper right. Uh, that was pretty big of a mistake. He uh, came close to losing his big M&M &M group in the middle a couple of times. Um, and obviously, he didn't kill off Savior's natural expansion when I felt like he should have. Uh, but in the end, though, I mean, Savior, a little bit over-aggressive, I feel. I, I feel that he was actually very, very close with Nada. He didn't need to go for that big attack and leave himself so vulnerable to, uh, to quick destruction. I think he could have spared the two or three minutes to get the Defilers out. Because I also don't think Nada would have been able to push into Savior, like what you were saying, Klazer. I don't think that would have happened either. Not a, uh, if Savior hadn't thrown away all the lurkers, I mean, he wouldn't be able to push very well. Um, but, you know, in the end, I think uh, Savior was the one who lost the game, um, it, despite, you know, a very, very interesting maneuver at the end. I think just a little impatient. Yeah, I don't want to prolong this discussion too much. I agree with you. I mean, if you look at the amount of lurkers he had and lings that he threw away at Nada's Natural Expo, if he had used all of those to take out Nada's uh, frontal force to take out Nada's main attack force, even if he'd lost all the lurkers and, and just barely held Nada off, it would have been enough because his economy was kicking in and he would have had Defilers out and then from that point on he could have taken control of the game. Uh, the, the key thing f was for him to engage that main force and he left that main force ali alive and you can't do that with a Terran player as a Zerg, you just cannot because Terran players are notorious at surviving um, Right. With, with fewer defenses, and if they have a, a, a strong mobile force out, you have to kill it, because otherwise they'll just destroy your entire base with it. Anyway, we'll move on to the next one. Uh, thanks to Ryzen Cholera, uh, and uh, see you guys in Game 2.